Hello, everyone, and welcome. I know some of you are、um, still entering the room, so I'll just say a, a warm, warm welcome. I see some friendly faces. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jennifer. This is great. Welcome to my studio. It's kind of like having a party virtually, and lots of my favorite people are showing up. Please feel free to introduce yourself. I know there's folks from all over the world tonight, so it's just such a great opportunity for everybody to、um, gather and paint and create together. My name is Lisa Mann. For those of you that don't know me, I do know a lot of you that have showed up just just now, and it's really great to see to see you all in the chat room. Um, I'm an artist and a gallery owner, and a teacher and a counselor as well.、Um, and it is true that my work、um, has won lots of awards, has been in lots of collections. But my my very favorite thing to do is to share this、um, joy of creativity, and particularly、um, the freedom of of expression when we create abstract art with others. So I'm I'm honored that you're all here tonight, and I'm really excited to、um, go on this journey with you. Um, so I've already said, please introduce yourself and feel free to chat in the chat box. And every once in a while, I will stop the painting process and、um, return to the chat box and answer any questions that you might have that come up.、Um, I am recording this, and I will send you all a recording. You should receive it within an hour or two after this is broadcast, so that.、Um, You can just watch if you if you want to just watch and take it all in and ask questions and be present and then paint along afterwards. I do have a private a private Facebook group that you are all officially invited to, and I would love to see what whatever you've created from tonight's live class、um, come up in that Facebook group. It's a really great place to share your work and be a part of a really supportive and wonderful community. And you'll also get lots of updates about other free live events and painting giveaways, which I'll talk about later. Oh, and there's a couple surprises.、Um, so be sure if you、um, kind of minimize your chat box that you open it up so you can see some surprises that I've got later on. So I am thrilled to begin this journey with you all about.、Um, Helping you to turn your own experiences into a beautiful piece of abstract art. Who is this class for? Well, it's for artists, whether you're experienced or novice, all ages, all abilities. I know that we all have art inside of us, and it's just a matter of gaining the experience and the right tools to help coax it out. And it's for everybody who wants to join in the fun. Who is this not for? Well, <laughs> skeptics, for those of us that、uh, or those that can't hold a pencil, and haha, your pet cat. Even though I have heard that some of those pet cats do know how to paint, <laughs> it's virtually for everybody. So, just for a moment before we begin to pull our paints out, I just want to ask you to imagine what your outlook would look like if you could freely and joyfully express yourself with paint.、Um, it's truly a wonderful, wonderful experience, and I'm going to show you how to do that. In the next forty-five minutes or so, I will be sharing、um, with you a glimpse behind the curtain into some of my own painting practice, and I will guide you step by step to create a glorious work of art that really only you can create. This is not a cookie cutter approach; it is a more intuitive process of painting, and that means that、um, what comes out on your canvas is going to be uniquely a piece of your own art. And I can't wait to see what that is. I hope you stick around to the end, not only for the big reveal of the painting and because it's going to be a lot of fun, but I also have、um, another free course that I'll provide you with and a couple more surprises coming your way. So I'm just wondering, does any of this sound like you? I know it does.、I'm、frustrated, perhaps that your art just feels flat and lackluster.、Um, perhaps you're intimidated by the blank canvas or by how to go about creating abstract art in general. Uh, perhaps you've always wanted to paint, but just didn't know where to start. And maybe you thought until now that painting was only for folks with a born talent. And I am going to show you how that's not necessarily true. We all have that inside of us. What would it feel like 
if uh, you could dream of having your art be noticed, shown in galleries, selling. I'm going to show you because when we create art like this, that it comes from a more powerful and personal place, that's the art that gets noticed and has the most impact on the viewer. And that's the art that sells. So I know what it's like because I've been in many of those places before myself um, of feeling like my own art years ago was lackluster and I didn't know how to get it noticed. So I'm going to um, teach you one of the methods that works exactly for myself and thousands of other students to begin to get your art noticed. You are in the right place because I am going to show you behind the scenes um, into one of my many favorite methods of creating um, my award-winning abstract art. And um, learn with me today, and I'm, I know you're going to be amazed at the glorious creations you and only you can produce. And most importantly, how wonderful it feels to express yourself so beautifully with your art. We are going to um, talk about the tools and the mindset involved in creating this kind of art um, to produce beautiful abstract paintings um, in order to be able to share and remember these moments, to express yourself, and yes, lastly, to finally get your art noticed because it will be so beautiful and so meaningful and powerful. I am Lisa Mann. I am the founder of Lisa Mann Fine Art. Um, I have studio and galleries in Portland, Oregon and Naxos, Greece. I am an award-winning abstract landscape artist, a gallery owner. I have uh, art and galleries and collections worldwide and I have been trained in art, teaching and counseling and I'm so happy to share my skills with you today. I'm also the founder and creator of the Six Rhythms of Creativity, which is a framework that I use to help my students tap into the own rhythms of their own creativity to produce this kind of art. So just for a second, I want us to think about the old way of what we thought you had to um, embody to be an artist. We potentially thought artists had to go to art school, be taught in a university setting, and that it was only for a few elite that were invited in. But I'm going to show you today the new way that we are all artists and it's simply a matter of getting the right tools and the right methods to open up your creativity that will allow you to express yourself. So I'm going to ask you, are you ready? Because I am ready to show you how. Hello. I can't wait to get started with you all. Um, before we begin, I want to show you the materials that I am using. And also just encourage you to use whatever you have in your home. The focus on this is really creativity. Um, so I'll share with you what I'm using and talk about it, but really any materials that you have can be used here. If you've got crayons, markers, acrylics, oil paints. I'm gonna be using oil paints today. And um, I've chosen a couple colors. Just wanna show you my rhyme or reason behind this. Um, I use a color wheel to help me out and um, kind of one general rule of thumb that is often helpful is to choose colors, I'll just show you this little dial here, that are opposite one another on the color wheel. I'm going to be using a yellow greenish color called green gold. I'm going to choose its opposite for an accent color and that's under the red violet and I've got a dioxamine purple. And then for a little added um, interest, I'm gonna use, I'm looking at there's a triangle on color wheels and these, these are called triads. And I'm gonna use a blue violet and a reddish, reddish orange. So um, for my blue, I've got a manganese blue hue, which is actually more in this blue area, but I'm going to mix it probably with my violet. And for this reddish orange, I've got a naphthol red. <clears throat> I have a piece of multimedia artboard. You can paint on anything that you have. This is just a particular material I like because it accepts all mediums. I have some palette paper and I'll show you what that looks like. It's just sort of like a translucent piece of wax paper. You can use wax paper too or certainly a palette if you've got it. I will be using cold wax medium and this is something that I used in order to layer my work 
And in order for the paint to dry faster, you certainly don't need this. But this is what it looks like, like a white paste. I'm going to be painting with a couple of interesting tools. I've got a palette knife and this is called a clay shaper tool. Um, I like to use tools that are a little less exact. It helps me remain free in my work. A lot of times I'll use my hands, which is why I'm wearing gloves. Um, you're certainly welcome to use a brush. I have some painter's tape and I'll show you what I do with this in a second. I'd like to use this to create a border around my paintings. And then I have a picture of my kind of inspiration image, and I'll start with that. Um, I'm going to show you how I might go about approaching creating this beautiful scene into an abstract landscape painting. It's one of many techniques that I use when I do this, and it's a great place to start. And then I've also converted the picture into black and white. Um, so the first thing that I might do is look at this. I don't want to recreate this exactly. The idea behind the approach is that um, I can capture the essence of the, of the time, of the memory, of the moment without actually painting it. So I'm going to be thinking a lot about the feelings, the thoughts, the emotions, the textures of the place. And I'm also going to begin with the shapes of this particular scene. So one thing that is wonderful to do in abstract painting is sort of think about the big picture. And the big picture of this is the shapes that I'm seeing. So I've got a crayon here. Actually, I'm going to take a marker that's easier for you to see. And I'm just going to really loosely outline some of the general shapes that I see here. I'm not, you know, going overboard with exactness. I'm just kind of outlining some general shapes. I've transferred this to black and white because one interesting thing to do is to make sure when we're using these very playful colors that we've got darks and lights. And sometimes that's hard to see when we're focused on the beautiful colors that we're creating. So I'm just gonna eyeball this and get a sense of, well, this is a darker space here. This is dark. This space here is quite light. And this space here is quite light. And this space here is quite light. And maybe the ocean area is what I would call a mid-tone, someplace between dark and light, and the mountainside here is in the middle. I'm just going to use that as a reference, again, not to take it too literally, but just to kind of make sure that my painting has some dark, some lights, and some in the middle. The next thing that I'm going to do is prepare my board, and I do this by putting tape around the edges. And again, this is an optional step. I like to do this because it creates a really beautiful natural border when I'm finished. I do want to tell you that this video um, will be sent to you after the webinar, after the free live class is over. So you're welcome to just watch me do it this time and then paint along and push pause. I do move rather quickly, and the reason that I move quickly is because I feel like it helps me turn my brain off. A lot of abstract painting is learning how to tap into that creative side, that playful side, that non-critical side. That's where the unexpected and exciting results come in. And one way of getting to that playful side and turning our inner critic off and focusing on play is to not overthink things. So I've got my board ready here. And the next thing I'm going to do is to prepare my palette. Now I'm going to show you my approach to doing this. I'm not going to take you through 
every color that I'm using, but I want to give you some ideas. My idea when recreating the scene is not to make it exactly as I saw it. Again, I'm trying to be playful and capture the essence of the place. And I'm going to do that with colors too. They're not necessarily going to be the most realistic. One of the things um, that I keep in mind when I paint is that I, that I work from an intuitive level. And that means that I have an idea where I'm going, but at some point midway through the painting, I'm following the paints and experimenting and almost like a big journey, putting one step, one foot in front of the other. I don't always know where the journey is going to go. So I'm going to prepare my palette ahead of time with the basic colors. And that's going to allow me to focus on the playfulness of spirit of my journey. And if I have the basic colors set out, and I know that those work with one another the way I showed you on the color wheel, then I can really explore freely and not be overthinking, well, will these colors fit with one another? Will they work? I'm going to set my colors out ahead of time, and I'm going to know that they are going to work. So I'm just putting all those four different colors in that triad that I showed you. I wanted to put my purple. These are the two main colors I'm going to focus on, at least for starters. I've got the purple and the green. And I'm going to put a big pile of white and black. Okay, so I told you that I used cold wax medium. And what I do is I just put a big pile of this on my palette and I mix about 30% wax and 70% oil paint. And I'm just going to do that with each color for starters. So I know that that's mixed. You can see in this blue pile, this is all in real time. You can see in this blue pile, I put perhaps a little bit too much wax and the color is not so saturated. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. Now, once I have all of my paints mixed with my wax, and again, this is an optional step, I'm going to begin to play and explore. So my palette is set up and I've got some colors that I love. A lot of this mixing for me sometimes takes place on the painting itself, but let me show you what I mean. I'm going to begin by taking one of my colors, my green, and I want to show you what happens when I mix my green. Look, I have a little bit of purple on that. I mix it with what was the opposite of that green on the color wheel. And what happens is it becomes a different version, perhaps a more toned down, more muted version of that color. I like to think of a painting is almost like a musical production or a theater production. There's going to be stars of the show, beautiful colors, beautiful moments that emerge. And in order to support the stars of the show, I need a really good supporting cast. And when I create these color combinations that are more neutral, um, they support the stars of the show. So I've got this color here. And let me see what happens. I'm just playing and exploring. Let me see what happens when I mix that color with the green and the purple with white. It creates this super gorgeous kind of toned down green. Now I might look at this and say, I love this. I actually really like that. Or I might look at that and say, you know what? I don't love that. Let me come up with another combination or alter this one till I do get something I love. So let's pretend I'm going to add a little bit more green. Maybe this time I'll add some black to it. Let me see what happens if I get some beautiful darker tones besides just the green. 
I mean, besides just the black, sorry. Now that looks kind of black. Sometimes you can't see what's happening until you add white to it. So all of a sudden I added a little bit more green and a little bit of black, and now I get another tone. Well, gosh, that's just gorgeous. What happens when I mix my blue with a little bit of this beautiful green? How does that alter the color? Well, isn't that stunning? What happens when I take that color and mix it with white? Totally different um, experience there. So I'm just playing with my palette and quite frankly, I don't always know exactly what I'm gonna end up with, but I do know that I'm gonna keep working and playing and exploring till I get colors that respond to the heart and soul of the place and what I like. And I'm gonna encourage all of you to find the colors that you love when creating your palette and your painting. That's part of what makes it so personal and so exciting. So I'm just continuing to mix varying amounts of each of these colors. This is a pure green with white, and that's super stunning, wow. I know I'm gonna to wanna to use that, that's really beautiful. What happens if I focus on the purple end of things? We haven't done that. What if I mix purple with just a very small amount of green? How does that change the color of the purple? Sometimes you can't see how it changes it until you add it with white. So for example, I can see with my eyes that this purple is um, more toned down than this one, less vibrant, I would say. What happens when I mix each of these with white? And I can do the same thing with black. Well, this purple that I mix with the green, interestingly enough, has almost some red tones that I'm seeing with my eyes. And I think that was because there was a, some red in the green that I used. Interesting. Very pretty kind of mauve color. I'm running out of space on my palette here. And I can see that these two purples now are very different. The one that I've toned down and with the um, little bit of green in it added to white and then the pure purple. So I'm gonna continue playing with my colors that I've set out ahead of time until I get um, a whole group of colors that I really love. And some are dark on the darker side, some are on the lighter side, and some are on the mid-tone side. And I'm gonna continue with that and prepare my palette so that I know where I'm going to go to when I'm working on my painting. And um, I can really focus on the playfulness of the painting itself. So I'm going to set this aside. And I've got some colors that I really love. I'm loving some of these greens. And I like some of the blues and the purples. And I'll show you how I'm going to use those. So. As a reminder, I set aside this painting and I outlined some very general shapes. And I'm gonna do the same very loosely. I've got a crayon here and um, really without overthinking this, without being rigid or tight, I'm not even holding my pencil in an exact way, my, my crayon in an exact way. I'm just gonna generally outline some of these shapes that I have on my photograph, the scene that I'm trying to remember. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. And actually, in many ways, it's more powerful and beautiful when it's not exact. Okay, I'm just sort of drawing in these shapes. Uh, and I'm gonna call it a day, okay? Just very general. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm looking back at my photograph and I'm gonna see, all right, here's my dark shapes. Here's my light shapes. 
And here's my middle tone shapes. I'm going to fill those in without overthinking it with some of the darks, some of the lights, and some of the midtones that I've created on my palette. So for starters, let me see about a beautiful dark tone that I can get going on here. And you see, I'm using my palette knife. I like to use the tools that are less exact um, because they really allow me to focus on not being overly attached to the outcome. And it's that playfulness that I'm going to encourage all of you to experiment and explore with. Now, I know you probably have questions. I just want to let you know that I'm going to finish one layer of this painting and then take my gloves off and look at the screen so I can answer some questions for you. Okay, there's one dark shape. Well, you know, here's another dark shape I remember from my picture up here, and I'm going to just choose a different color that is also dark. These might, may or may not um, show up in the final version of the painting. This is just me beginning the process, beginning the journey. I like to think of it as a really great journey, the first day of summer, and I don't exactly know where I'm going. I've got a train ticket. And I know that there's a great adventure in store for me if I just pay attention to what's happening. And that is exactly the way that I treat each and every painting. It's a great big adventure. And like I said, at some point, the paints are going to take over and I'm going to be just responding to what I see in front of me. Okay, I've got a couple dark shapes in there. Maybe I'll add, I know from the, remember, there was one small dark shape here in the foreground. Let me add in some lights. Well, I certainly came up with some super stunning light colors. Let me see. Here was a light color here. Part of my... Um, my job as a teacher is to expose you to as many tools and techniques and ideas as I can in the hopes that one of them or two of them will really allow you the freedom of expression and creativity that your thoughts and your artwork deserves. And I guess it's your job as an artist, because I believe that we really are all artists at heart. I truly believe that. Your job is to continue the experimentation until you find the method and the tool that works right for you. Okay, now you can see right here already, some, some of what's happening is these colors are mixing organically, and I'm liking that. Because if I envision perhaps that this is the pathway, um, you know, this isn't going to be one uniform color. It's going to be many colors that are, if I'm choosing this color, it's in that sort of yellowish range. Okay, speaking about um, using different materials or tools or colors that are helpful for you, I'm going to switch materials just to show you, switch tools, excuse me, just to show you in the hopes, again, that you can be beginning, be beginning to just approach your painting in the spirit of exploration and playfulness and just asking the question, what if? Well, right now I'm asking the question, what if I just use this tool instead? I said, this is a, it's called a clay shaper tool. Um, it's just got a, you, it's like a little mini spatula, actually. There's another light color. Let's see. And this is the area that I guess we could loosely call the water. Again, not sure if this is going to stay or not. A lot of times I, once I get the initial colors blocked in, um, that is truly time for just letting the painting and the paints guide the way. So I'm not going to be wed to any of this. That blue is quite stunning. I'm wondering if I want to use it someplace else. My goodness. 
I'm not sure about that. Maybe I want to add some green to my blue here just to delineate. Not sure. Okay, and let me get a couple more mid-tones in here. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to find, but or what's going to work. Let's see. You see, when I'm using my tools, I'm even using a very light touch on how I hold the tools. I really want to encourage that playfulness of spirit into um, my painting. And it really does make a difference how I hold on to the materials, uh, what I'm thinking and feeling as I'm using the materials. One of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves as artists, and again, I believe we are all artists at heart, is turning off that um, voice of self-criticism and self-doubt. And when that voice can successfully be turned off, um, that's when the most powerful and amazing pieces of art come to life. One way of turning off that voice of doubt is by simply following the paints and letting them guide you. And that is exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm just thinking, what color do I want that gorgeous sky to be? If it is indeed the sky, I kind of like the idea of it remaining a sky. Um, so I've got my palette here mixed up. I'm going to go with a light bluish purple and just see how that feels. I'm not sure that's going to work, but I'm going to give it a try. Okay, and like I said, in just a minute, I'm going to push pause, answer questions that may or may not have come up, let the painting set up just for a minute and then continue. Okay, so I have my initial layers down and let me take a quick break, answer some questions, and then we'll come right back to it. Now, I know you're probably thinking this looks like a bit of a mess, and I do want to say before I turn this off, it is a bit of a mess, but turning that critical mind off, um, as I was saying, that's so important in abstract work and in artwork in general, I believe. Um, each painting is a journey, and um, some of our journeys take some chaotic twists and turns. Um, and... It's our job as artists to be able to embrace that chaos and trust that we can harness that chaos into some beautiful moments of calm. So that's what I'm going to do next. So while we're waiting for the initial layers to dry just a bit before we finish our painting, I want to introduce you to a special offer that we have going on right now. It's almost 50% off a course that I will teach you how to create a series of abstract landscapes, much like the one that we did today, offering you lots and lots more tips and tools and tricks. I'll guide you step by step and introduce you also to my six part method of the flow of creativity to help you learn both the skills to paint and find the courage to find your own artistic voice so you can share it. Um, space is limited because I like to be able to give attention to folks that are in the class. There's a link that I'm popping up right now on the right for this special offer. So I would encourage you to reserve your spot now and take advantage of the limited offer that's happening right now. So if you are feeling stuck and want to move your painting process to the next level or have really been wanting to try abstract painting or even new to painting and want to experience the joy of creativity, this class is for you, and I really encourage you to sign up, and um, I hope to see you there. So the, the link, once again, is on the right. Um, please click it and reserve your spot. 
And so you can understand the power and how wonderful these classes are, I want to introduce you to a few past students for just a moment, and they'll tell you what it's like to take a class with me. Hi. If you're watching this video because you're trying to decide about whether to sign up for one of Lisa Mann's art classes, the answer is yes. Lisa is by far the most generous uh, and positive teacher I think I've ever met. Her knowledge of the process, her knowledge of the concepts of um, artistic composition, and most importantly, her extremely positive feedbacks uh, and her ability to find something in your painting that you might not be able to find yourself. Um, her ability to put you on a path that might make a painting improve um, when you are ready to throw it in the trash. <laughs> so for all those reasons, I highly recommend that you uh, take a look at some of Lisa's classes. Hey, Lisa Mann was one of the best instructors I've ever had. I am not an abstract painter at all. And she got me excited about the cold wax and doing some abstract. She's organized, she's fun, she's kind, helpful, and just a really great instructor with all kinds of information. Um, I met Lisa Mann through a Zoom class, my first cold wax oil painting class with her. It felt like it was an immediate um, connection for me. She's a super clear teacher. The demonstrations are great. Even better than that, I absolutely came to love cold wax painting. The majority of the work I do right now, so I'm extremely grateful. I was introduced to it and I still take classes from Lisa. Even on Zoom, which is not my preferred medium, uh, class is really fun. I like the other people that come. I like the energy that she brings to her classes. It creates a really nice camaraderie, especially this year, which has got to be one of the most difficult years I can imagine. Here's one of my paintings. That's called the Green Flash, and I did that with Lisa in one of my first classes. Thanks, Lisa, and I definitely recommend Lisa's classes to anybody, beginners and experienced artists. Okay, now my painting has dried just even for a couple minutes, it helps. And certainly if you're using acrylic paints or markers, um, yours should be on the dry side. And this is a point in time where I look at what I've created, the playfulness that I've created, and just allow myself to focus in on what are some areas that I really like and what are some areas that I might like to conceal a little bit more. I think of it as the stance between revealing, concealing, revealing, concealing. Rather than think of it as like, oh, I really don't, I don't like this at all and it's bad. I put that thought out of my mind, but I think, well, what are areas that I love and then how can I guide the other supporting actors and actresses in those areas? So for example, I'm looking at the painting here and I'm thinking, I love this down here. I love the pathway, at least in my mind, it's a pathway that's leading me up here. And I love these cool colors that are developing. This is a bit of, um, it's detracting uh, um, uh, to, from this sort of cool melodic scene. And this is a little bit detracting, detracting and distracting, I should say. So I'm going to um, focus a little bit on, well, what can I do to these? Let me just ever so subtly see if I can tone those down. And I'll tell you the first thing that I'm going to do is try to alter the color a little bit. And you see when I apply paint, whatever material you're, you're using, I would encourage you to, again, just in the spirit of playfulness, I'm not necessarily covering this entire section. I'm allowing the paints to mix on the page. Now I'm using my tool in a way that I hadn't planned. I'm sort of scratching in here and just seeing what happens. Okay. That helps some. How can I deal with this spot here in a way that might feel a little bit more harmonious to my painting? Let me just play with that for a minute. Mm 
And then again, I'm just, I don't know sometimes if the colors are gonna work until I get them on the page. I'll tell you what I love here is this color, this green color is drawing my eye in and I've, I just decided spontaneously that I needed to add some of that in. You see, I'm not wed to the original composition. I don't think there was a light area here originally, but I, this green color is so beautiful, it can lead my eye through the painting. So I'm gonna just mix some more of that up. That was not enough of it. Super beautiful. And uh, let me see what I've got. It's more on the blue side. I'm definitely not afraid to just get in there and begin experimenting and exploring. Okay, that helped some. Just gonna keep going. Sometimes what happens is I, I fidget and I fiddle and I respond to certain areas and then I let it dry and take a step back. So what I'm hoping to provide you with is lots of tools and ideas that you can use because your painting, this, is, this process is not paint by number, it is an intuitive process and your painting is gonna be a reflection of you and different than mine and isn't that wonderful? So I am gonna show you some of my thought process and some of my tricks and tools and hopefully you can use those for your own exploration and exciting paintings. And I do have a Facebook group as I mentioned, and I would really love to see your work on that Facebook group. I'd love for you to share it. I'd love to see what you came up with. And it's a really great place to be a part of um, a supportive and growing artist community. I would love, 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 love for you to be a part of that. I just went back in over here. The red I was finding a little bit distracting. So I put some of that green on top of it. I'm loving this, which in my mind is the pathway, so I'm just gonna go over that a little bit more. Sometimes I have the tool that I'm using go in the direction or in the movement of the area that I'm painting, and I'm mimicking that with this, when I'm envisioning to be this pathway. So I'm thinking about this area here. Sometimes um, in the foreground, there are really beautiful kind of grasses and um, areas that sort of pop up in front of rocks. And I'm, I'm wondering about creating a color that can help me um, remember that and be reminiscent of that. I'm, I'm wondering about that. So I'm just gonna see Again, this might, may or may not work. I'm just gonna dig in here with my palette knife. And without actually painting the grasses or each individual blade, I am, again, working with the illusion of detail. So I put some of that in right there. I think that that helps. I might decide, um, let me see what happens if I put a little bit in, of that in on the other side. Looks like my 
palette knife is not cooperating. So let me see what happens um, if I change my tool. this maybe that will be helpful and I like how some of that red showed through that was beautiful okay I'm gonna leave that for now okay that's actually it's getting there in my mind just thinking about this area adding some potential richness. <laughs> Movement to that. In a second, I'm going to stop and take a step back and uh, make some final tweaks to it, potentially, and see what you all have come up with, because I'm curious. Just want to add one more little spark of excitement right there. Often... There's a couple things that can lead the viewer's eye around the painting. Composition is certainly one of them. And um, the colors that we choose and how we choose the colors is certainly part of that too. I talk a lot about that in um, the classes that I offer. But needless to say, um, the tools that I've given you just now are definitely a start that you can use to achieve some really great results and I do look forward to seeing what you all have come up with. I was just thinking about leading the viewer's eye a little bit more in that direction and in order to do so I was hoping to get a pop of lightness up there or brightness. And I have to come back to that. Think about it. Okay, so Right now, what I'm going to do, I think, is let this rest and um, step away from the painting. I take a picture of it, um, and I just ask myself again, what am I loving? Is there a way for the stars of the show to be supported by more by the supporting actor? What are the areas that I really love that I want to accentuate on? What are the areas that might need a little toning down? And I just... Um, let it be for a moment. And what I'm going to do right now is play with this, turn the camera off, answer any questions, and then I'll let it sit for a moment, take the tape off, and then I'll show you the end result that I've come up with. And again, really look forward to seeing what you've come up with. I hope we stay in touch. I'm really... Um, Happy and honored that you chose to spend your time to paint with me. It's truly one of my greatest pleasures to share the joy of creativity and painting with others. And I hope this inspires you to not only paint because you're enjoying the process, but perhaps you'll decide to share this um, spirit of creativity and share your paintings with others. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I've continued with the same exact process, just um, step by step, little by little, allowing the journey of the paints to guide me. And um, now it's time to take the tape off. This is always part of the big reveal. Now, it's pretty messy. I've taken my gloves off because it's hard to get a hold of the tape. If I don't, and... Uh, you might think this is something you don't need to watch, but I, I think watching the big reveal is truly an exciting piece of the puzzle when I take the edges off. Trying the whole while to keep the paint off the edges. 
when I take the tape off, I pull away from the painting. Now, often I would wait until the painting were dry before I did something like this, but I wanted to share it with you. One of my favorite new tools for getting um, oil paint, at least off my hands, is alcohol wipes. <laughs> I have a lot of those lying around. We can't rush, we can't rush the process. Sometimes it's hard to see the painting with all the chaos on the edges, which is why I often will let it sit at least for a day and take a picture of it so I can really see what's happening in the painting because those edges add a fair amount of chaos and sometimes it's hard for our eyes to focus. Last but not least. Cool. Make sure you can see it. Well, that came out pretty beautiful. So here's the painting, just to remind you. Here's what I started out with. It's reminiscent. Hopefully it captures the feeling, the spirit of that moment in time, um, but it's not painting it exactly. I have the illusion of some details, the feeling and the spirit of the place. Um, and I hope this kind of intuitive painting and exploration will lead you on all sorts of creative journeys, and I can't wait to see what you've come up with. Thank you for joining me. So here is a picture of the final painting. I've put it in a frame, and that really helps me to see the beauty of what we created. It's evocative of the place and time without painting it exactly. I've put it in a room, which re again really shows the power of and the beauty of the painting that we created together and it looks pretty glorious in there. So as a quick recap, um, I walked you step by step as we turned a photo of a meaningful moment um, of mine into a gloriously personal and powerful piece of art. I shared a small glimpse of the many proven tools and methods that I used to teach thousands of students how to succeed in expressing themselves beautifully through art. And it's definitely a way to get your art noticed because that powerful art that I've talked about is the art that sells. Um, so I invite you to learn more of my tools and let your own art speak from your heart it, and create art that is uniquely yours. The offer is for a limited time to make. It's normally a $400 uh, class and it's $225. So your choice is to try to go it on your own and continue on potentially the path that you've been on, which maybe hasn't gotten you the results that you want. Or the second choice is to learn from a proven and tested process of mine and thousands of students, um, again, from the celebrated artist, award winner, gallery owner, and someone who has actually mastered uh, creating art that sells. I know you'll make up the 225 in the first painting of yours that you sell, so I really encourage you and invite you to join us. Um, I do only accept a small cohort of people. It's an online course, but I'd like to be able to respond to everybody. So I'm hoping that you choose this creative path. Um, your next steps would be to join an online course. Click the button below to create this beautiful series of abstract landscapes and let your own heart sing in the form of color and paint, which again, it would, paintings are uniquely yours to your own experience and your own self-expression. So please click the link below and reserve the spot. I will say, who is this course not for? Well, it's not for someone that wants to continue on the same path that they've been on, doing it alone, and potentially without the guidance of a trusted artist and teacher. It's very different from your usual art classes that you're gonna find out there because I guide you step by step, not only into the how of creating the painting, but the why. And I agree the, include those magic ingredients of not just how to create the painting, but how to express yourself authentically, how to dig deep and really find out what it is that you'd like to say, and then the important ingredient of sharing that with others, which is a big part of why I'm doing this. It's part of my 
Paint It Forward campaign, um, I am committed to spreading love and joy through the creation and sharing of art. And this free webinar and my free painting giving away, giveaway that's going on right now is um, part of my commitment to paint it forward and, and share in that creation. Um, so I do encourage you to um, act on this offer now. Again, it will be very different than other art courses that you've taken. Um, the value is, again, not in just the how you, go, you paint, but in um, me helping you tap into the why and creating really beautiful and meaningful pieces of art that are uniquely yours and helping you to share that with the world. So it is such a pleasure to have painted and created with you. Um, it's a last call. You will see on the button down below, um, click here to get your deeply discounted and um, for a limited time only um, course. It's normally $400 and $225 um, to really bring your art through to the next level in a way that you potentially have not been able to with more traditional, um, either online or in-person art classes because um, I'm not only gonna share with you the many tools that are proven and, will, and work, um, but I also um, really understand how to teach those tools to you. So I hope that you join me. Click the link below and thank you so much. It's a